The young from the first brood are fledged. Usually the chicks leave the nest after 26 to 29 days and will be fed for about one more week by the male. Early in the morning a male arrives with food in his bill and calls to his mate because she is nowhere near the nest. When she finally arrives, he courts her for a second brood. It is a typical mock feeding in which the male introduces the feed into the female bill and withdraws it several times, with the female lowering her body. The male does not let go of the prey. Courtship feedings are repetitive. Hoopoo females frequently start a second clutch very soon after the fledging of the first one. Because these hoopoos are not ringed, it is very difficult to tell them apart, but the feather pattern of this bird looks like the female from the first brood, and she apparently will start a second clutch at the same nest location in the walnut tree. As the male does not feed the female, she goes in search of food for herself. Some days later, the female has started to lay eggs and stays close to the nest. Once again, the male will feed the female during the incubation period of the eggs. When the male arrives with food, it turns out to be a different male. It sometimes happens that hoopoos change mates for the second brood. The female returns to the nest to brood. The next day, the female cleans herself and waits on the branch for the male to bring food. Finally, she flies off. But returns quickly to the nest. A little later, a juvenile of the first brood arrives and is fed by the new nesting male. This indicates that this juvenile is the descendant of the new male and has followed his father to the walnut tree to be fed for a few more days. So this male must be very fit to be able to feed the female as well as his offspring.
When the mail flies away, some European starlings arrive and the juvenile follows their movements. When the visitors come too close, the juvenile opens its wings as a defence and moves in a snake-like fashion to scare them off, but with little success. The juvenile cleans itself and hops to a more sheltered spot in the vegetation closer to the nest. The starlings are attracted by some berries in a bush behind the walnut tree. Little impressed, a juvenile European starling imitates the movements of the juvenile hoopoo and opens its wings. The hoopoo juvenile looks on attentively, but is soon distracted by other starlings above him. The male arrives with food, feeds its offspring, observes the starlings for a brief moment, and flies away. The next day it's raining, and the female fluffs up her feathers to keep warm. She is waiting for a meal. She spreads her wings and moves a little higher up onto a branch, but returns to the more sheltered spot in the vegetation. She waits patiently and will be rewarded with a meal.
After cleaning her bill and stretching her wings, she flies away. The river below the walnut tree is swelling. On her return, the nesting female is fed again. She now moves to the nest to incubate the eggs and the magpie a little higher in the tree flies off in its turn. After the rain the wild boar feed in the tall grass. The eggs have been incubated for a fortnight and thus, when the female leaves the nest, it is possible that a chick has hatched and that she is looking for smaller prey to feed the newborn. The chicks are born asynchronously. When the male arrives with food, the female has not yet returned. He calls her softly with food in his bill. The male moves to a higher branch. As soon as the female returns, the male joins her at the nest. Deposits the food and leaves straight away. In the late afternoon, the female waits for the male just outside the nest. A lesser spotted woodpecker is searching for food. And a carrion crow can be heard from the top of the poplar tree. A European red squirrel moves across the branches. And feasts on a walnut. but decides to finish it in a quieter place. The female flies to the nest to feed the chicks. And when the nesting male arrives, he waits for a short moment before flying to the nest. A blackbird hops over the branch but is chased away by the female. Hoopoos can fly quite a distance to forage. This time a flock of bee eaters lands in a poplar tree close by. These beautifully coloured birds also migrate from Africa to nest on steep sandy riverbanks nearby. They feed on flying insects such as bees and wasps.
In the final episode, the nestlings are so big they can go to the nest entrance and wait for food with their heads poking out. And a juvenile of the first brood is curious and inspects the nest with the chicks. 